Hello everyone, welcome back, and today we are back here to look at the top anime of Winter 24 by what I liked, I guess, and of what I've watched. This is one of my favorite things to do, also looking at the, the new upcoming, but this gives me a chance to gush about the great stuff that I watched and try to pass it on to all of you. So, let's go in, and there's going to be a top 10. So... Number 10, uh, I watched Fluffy Paradise, okay? Fluffy Paradise is one of these that uh, read the description for it. And basically, uh, an office worker dies and she gets reincarnated to another world. And God gives her an ability. And the ability she wants is to f pet fluffy things and just feel the healing power of animals and whatnot. So... God goes ahead and is like, okay, I got you. I got you back. And gives her the power to be loved by everything. Like, every non-human, like, thing, creature, it's like that, loves her. So, I have a few memes around here and a few pictures. So, the first one in the top left there is God giving her the ability or whatnot. Because he's like, oh, do you want teleportation or some killer ability? And she's like, I just want to pet fluffy things. I want the healing power of stroking silky long fur all the time. Uh, I, I feel that. I feel that. Then we have a picture of the wonderful tiger here that she befriends. Um, we also have a picture above me here where she befriends a dragon. Uh, a very powerful dragon. And she just wants to give it head pats. And then we have a little... Uh, it's a, <laughs> a little... Uh, Kobold, the dog type, and I haven't gotten floofs in forever. He's so fluffy. Oh, so beautiful. But yeah, Fluffy Paradise might not have been my absolute favorite this season, but it was a nice feel-good show that I, c I think everyone can get around. Like, if you love animals and stuff like that and would love to go to a fantasy world and just be able to befriend, touch, play with animals and stuff like that, I think everyone can get around her power. I think everyone can get behind it. But yeah, uh, pretty good. She basically it's her just meeting up with different things. She meets up with like some, like I said, the kobolds, uh, dragons, uh, some goblins. Uh, yeah, just lots of different fantasy creatures and stuff like that, and just getting along with them. So that's Fluffy Paradise, uh, number ten. Okay, next. We have one that I thought looked very, very good by the character designs. And that is number 9, Metallic Rogue. Uh, Metallic Rogue it was not my favorite this season. Now, I love the character design, and I did kind of like it. But I feel like the story was lacking in a lot of different aspects. Because I won't go into everything about it, but basically there is a new kind of species or a new creature that is made called the Nins. And they are basically kind of like androids, but they look very human-like. And these Nins are used to, they're also being used to terraform Venus for some reason. That's a, that's a plot point, but we won't go into that. But these Nins uh, are completely subservient to humans. They cannot do anything against a human's, like, like will. And they can't hurt humans either. Uh, there are certain humans that are called the Immortal Nine, I'm pretty sure that they are. And they can go against humans, they can fight, and they also have armor. So we have Metallic... Metallic Rouge? Did I say Rogue again? Metallic Rouge, that's the name of this. Thing. But anyways, Metallic Rouge is our main character here. She is the... She's got the highlights. She's got the red highlights, red, purple highlights, and black hair. And she is wonderful. I love all the character designs. I love the armor designs for this. Um, yeah. And I have a few different memes or pictures here. And one to the left here is... So, people who try to kill us are good guys? Uh, to us, you're definitely the bad guy, Rouge. <laughs> so basically, they kind of have a falling out, we'll say, and they don't know for sure who's good guy, bad guy, and I guess if you are against us, you're a bad guy. That's kind of what he was getting at. Uh, above me also, we have a picture here of Rouge not wanting to share candy with a small child, um, and she just instead just eats it all. 
And then I have a picture of Rouge with her armor there. So yeah, like I said, Metallic Rouge was kind of one of those that I thought looked pretty cool. It kind of reminded me of Evangelion a lot uh, because of the armor and stuff like that and some of the stuff that happens. Um, I loved the opening. The opening for this is very, very good. Um, but yeah, the story was kind of lacking and I feel like it could have done a bit more to flesh out the world and about the Nims and all that other stuff. So that's the reason why I got nine. If the story was better, uh, it could have easily bumped up to like fourth or something like that. But yeah, if you want to look at kind of, uh, I guess it's kind of a mecha, I guess, because she's kind of using armor or whatnot, but yeah, it's pretty cool. So let's move on to number eight. Oh, number eight. Of course, we have one of my, I guess, favorite genres. So, we have Villainous Level 99. I may not be... Sorry, I may be the hidden boss, but I'm not the Demon Lord. So, uh, this is a reincarnation, of course. So, uh, it's, an, an, a, it's based off of... Uh, I think it's like a visual novel, light novel, a game, okay? She's playing a game, and she died. And she got reincarnated into this world. And like the story says, or the title, I guess, uh, she's level 99. She's the villainess of the story. And then she's not the demon lord, but she, inside the game, she was the hidden boss. So, basically, this is kind of like um, the one villainous one with the red flags or the death flags or whatever. Basically, she's trying to keep herself from dying from the main characters kind of thing. So... What does she do? She becomes level 99. <laughs> she just, uh, she's a noble family, and she just goes to the dungeon, fights, 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 and fights some more. And by the time she gets to the actual, like, story of the game, she's already level 99. Um, and, of course, there are still some things that are trying to happen to her. Like, the game still tries to make them fight her at some points. The main character's other than her, like, the main story characters try to, like, belittle her and stuff like that. And she is very dense. She is very, very dense. Um, so, we have some memes here for it. So, when someone gets you, <laughs> if you were the Demon Lord, the world would have uh, ended a long time ago. And she's like, uh, you're correct, basically. <laughs> Since he's a little 99. Then we also have this other one right over here. And do not use the monster calling flute. And then literally three minutes later, flute go brr. So that's one of her leveling up tactics is she has a monster calling flute that she can call monsters. And at one point, she's trying to help other people from the school level up. And she just starts blowing it. She just starts blowing it and everyone's freaking out. And Patrick there is trying to reprimand her. And the love interest is, of course, Patrick. And she is very dense, like I said, and she does not understand. And yeah, it's pretty good. So if you want to watch another series about a reincarnated person that gets reincarnated into a video game, and then they become, they are also the villainous, this is exactly what you want. And I have grown quite fond of these type of genres, and I'm ready for more. Um, but yeah. Uh, that is Villainous Level 99. I may be the hidden boss, but I am not the Demon Lord. So, let's move on to number 7. Okay, so number 7, the wrong way to use healing magic. This is one that initially, whenever I was looking at what's coming up next uh, for the winter season, I did not like the trailer. The trailer was not that great. It did not show you very much about it. The only thing that I could really see is that it had good character design and good art. And I put I put it out on a limb that I was going to try watching this. And maybe the story's not great, maybe the animation is great and the story like the the art style is great. Maybe I'll like it enough with that. I was wrong. The story was good and the art was good. It was a pretty good series. 
So this is a summon to another world instead of getting like reincarnated or revived in another world, whatnot. So uh, the three characters, which end up being two heroes and then the healing character that's our maiden character, they are summoned to this new world when they are in school. And um, the other two become heroes. Him, they initially don't think he's that good, but he has healing magic. And sadly for him, uh, the girl above us here, she has been looking for someone with healing magic. <laughs> and she picks him up, brings him out into like her cottage or whatnot, and trains him to use healing magic, which she herself is a healing magic user, and she is a walking tank. <laughs> so basically, the way she uses healing magic is to heal herself and to also, like, support her own abilities. So, she can basically go all out and not have to worry about hurting herself. So, guess what she does? She makes him exactly like her, maybe even better. So, she trains him very harshly, and so like that, but he becomes stronger, he uses healing magic, and yeah. I am a very, very big fan of this woman right above me here. <laughs> she is kind of my type. <laughs> but we have, uh, of course, if you look on the my side here, we have him with a bear, a blue bear. And I, I forgot what the name of the bear is. I think it's a joke about being blue. Uh, but anyways, he is a very, very cute bear. Um, then we also have... <laughs> my type of woman up here and it says you're finally starting to become my kind of man and that is what happens whenever he finally is kind of getting into his like strength and healing magic and whatnot and I have a picture here of some of the stuff that she made him do and she put a large brick of stone on his back and then she sat on it and made him do push-ups so that's the type of stuff that he had to do uh, to get as strong as he is and this is not really a power fantasy uh, anime by any stretch of the means, because he actually has to build up his strength. Uh, even though he does get very OP, kind of like her. Um, most of the other characters are not really that memorable. There's some other healing magic people. There's also some people that he trained with that did not have healing magic, but were part of the healing core, or whatever they called it, the support group. Uh, then the heroes themselves aren't really shown that much. But yeah, um, it's one of those that, like, it's not, like I said, it's not a power fantasy, but he does get pretty powerful, and it's kind of funny. I, I thought it was pretty funny. So, if you are thinking about getting into this, it's like that, the trailer itself is not that great. I wish they would have done a better job with the trailer, because then, well, actually, because the trailer was not very good, it gave me low expectations, so it basically flew above and beyond what I was expecting. So yeah, if that any of that sounds cool to you and stuff like that, go ahead and give it a try. So, number seven, uh, the wrong way to use healing magic. Ah, uh, number six. So, solo leveling did not quite live up to my expectations, which my expectations were very high for it. So, going into this, um, I was talking about how solo leveling was one of the shows that was most anticipated. I'd been waiting for it for years to come out, probably at least two years, probably more than that, because I'd been hearing people read the manga and talk about how it's going to be the best adapted anime kind of style one. And it was not as good as I was initially thinking. It was good, but I, I'm not going to say it's bad. It was still good. It got number six on my list here, but it did leave a lot to want. Now, I think it left off on a very, very good point. I will not give away what happens in the ending, but I think it will lead on to a much better second season than it was a first season. But if you don't know about solo leveling, basically um, people in the real world are, I guess, tested to be hunters. And whenever you are tested and you are become a hunter, then, not like Hunter Hunter, but you will go into these portals or gates or whatnot. And inside of these are dungeons that you can fight, gather loot, get, I guess, anything you could find in there, like monster parts, crystals, and stuff like that. And basically, the whole world is kind of running at this to like, hey, we need to go into dungeons, we need to get these resources, 
and the resources are very, very highly wanted. So, we have our main character here. He is a lowest ranked hunter. I think an E rank, I'm pretty sure that's the lowest rank. And basically every dungeon or gate he goes into, he gets hurt very bad, like he could have died. And uh, one of the first gates, well, not one of the first gates, one of the gates he we come in to see is basically death. Um, if you've seen uh, this picture uh, up here to my side, up above me now, uh, you've probably seen that before. That is a picture from the first dungeon. And basically the first dungeon, a lot of people die. And somehow he survives. And he gets, uh, I don't know if it's called an ability or whatnot, but he becomes what is considered a player. And he gets new abilities and he gets a lot of, a lot of new stuff. Um, yeah, but whenever he reawakens with this new ability, he also gets uh, a new appearance, I guess. He becomes very different. So, on my side here, okay, we have the two different versions of him. So, the first version, he is kind of more childlike and stuff like that. And then the other one, he is very, very chiseled. <laughs> he has a lot better uh, muscle tone and whatnot, and also a lot more powerful. Um, yeah, and then I also have this picture here, which basically, uh, whenever they are inside the dungeon, the death one, uh, basically that is God to them. And I, this meme here is chat GPP, uh, chat GTP. And basically everyone is bowing down. Students, uh, devs, teachers, data scientists, engineers, everyone is bowing down to it. And I felt like that was super cool. Um, like I said, solo leveling did not quite live up to my expectations. It was still good. I think it will be better a second season than the first season. Plus, my expectations are right in line. And I am very excited for the next season for it. Um, but yeah, this is going to be your power fantasy for this uh, year. So, <laughs> uh, power fantasy, basically, he gets very, very, very powerful. Very, very quick. Um, but... Um, he also goes through a lot of hardships and stuff like that, and he about dies quite a few times. So, if you're into kind of a level up power fantasy kind of thing, and I think a lot of people are going to be making memes about it all the time, and a lot of people talk about it. Uh, so yeah, you might want to go watch that. So anyways, that was solo leveling number six. Ah, now we're getting into the hard point of me trying to uh, choose what numbers. So, number five, Shangri-La Frontier. So, Shangri-La Frontier is a very, very good anime that continued into this season. Um, it actually turned out to be one of my favorites to watch. I was really looking forward to every episode that came out. And this one was pretty good. <laughs> so... They end up fighting one of the Colossi, I think they're called, or Colossal uh, creatures or whatnot. So the Colossi or whatever are creatures that are unique. They are unique creatures inside there where there is only one of them. And everyone is trying to basically defeat these unique creatures. And they end up fighting one of them, which is uh, the Tomb Guard. And they actually do this for, I forgot how many episodes, three, four episodes? Uh, but yeah, it's a long raid, basically. Um, but our <laughs> main character that here, I will move myself, the Blue Bird Man here. He is wonderful. He is a trash gamer. He plays every game that is trashy, and he loves them. And instead of playing a trash game, he ended up playing a god-tier game, Shangri-La Frontier. So they are playing a VR game this whole time. Uh, think SAO, but if you die, you don't die in real life. And <laughs> I I love this, okay? Look at the bunny over there, okay? Uh, the bunny is so cute. He gets all these unique uh, instances and stuff like that. And he is trying to game the system, and I love it. Um, now, I will not say, like, it's number five. It's not my favorite of the season or whatever. But I was very excited to watch every episode. Um... I don't know much else to say about it other than he finds a lot of different ways to do, I guess, battling and stuff like that. He 
he is very, very smart because since he's played those trash games before, he knows glitches and he knows how to game the system and he is very, very used to VR gaming. So yeah, if you're into kind of a VR game where he goes in and plays in a big, large open world, it's like that, and the characters are very lovable and the fighting is pretty great, uh, you might be into Shangri-La Frontier. <laughs> so anyways, that was Shangri-La Frontier number five. Ah, uh, another good one. Another good one. Uh, number four, Undead Unluck. So, Undead Unluck. Uh, what can I say about Undead Unluck that I did not say last time? This was another continued one into the season. Um, <laughs> and basically, some something's happening in the world. And some people will get abilities and become negators. And these abilities usually are some sort of un- so, basically, um, Undead Unluck is a play on words of the two main characters or the two abilities. So, we have, I'm pretty sure her name's Fuko. Um, Fuko is unlucky, so her ability is unluck. We have uh, our main character, our guy there, that is, they call him Zombie and Andy and whatnot. A few different names. And then also Undead. His ability is undead. He cannot die. So he basically just continues living. He uses his ability to like shoot off his fingers with blood. He also can shove a sword in his back and use it as a sheath. I don't know. He has tons of these different things that he does with just like using his body parts. He also cuts off his legs at some points and uses them to shoot blood out to fly around. Pretty cool. Now, unlock Fuko there. Basically, whenever she touches someone, when she makes skin-to-skin -skin contact, they something will ha bad will happen to them. And that has caused quite a few people to die. And since Andy cannot die, they use that to their advantage. She can touch him, and then he can, like, sh shoot off a body part, or he can just run straight at the enemy, and then the unluck will happen. So the unluck can be as small as like falling over or something falling on you or something like that to as bad as an asteroid falling from space. Uh, then a lot of different other stuff. So <laughs> now that you have some sort of idea of what abilities they have, uh, basically the world is going to end and they are trying to fight God. <laughs> that is what the negators are trying to do. And this is basically them trying to do quests to get uh, items, artifacts, stuff like that, and to try to stop the world from ending because of God. Uh, if you that sounds interesting, uh, and it should, you should watch it. <laughs> All the characters are very memorable. Okay, all of them have cool abilities. They are very funny or memorable, like I said, and I just loved it. Okay. I cannot quite put it at, like, number one or number two or number three, but it is very high up there. And we have a few memes from it. Now, this did not give as many memes as I quite wanted, but we have a few good ones. So, here you go, buddy. Uh, what do you want me to fight with these? Oh, you know, I just want you to fight God. <laughs> so one of the characters we meet is called Unmove, and basically whenever he looks at someone, they cannot move. And basically, she's giving him very, very small a sword and shield, and basically is like, we're going to use this to fight God. Uh, very, very funny. And then we have, uh, when you notice your favorite character is getting much more screen time than usual, and the joke behind that is basically they're going to die pretty soon. And that's Fuko crying because usually whenever in anime <laughs> a character gets a lot of screen time, they're usually going to die either that episode or the next episode or very soon. So, um, yeah. So if you like kind of like this is kind of like a superhero kind of anime, even though they're not heroes, they are super. Uh, but they have powers and abilities and whatnot. So this is as close as you're going to get to a superhero anime this that season, I guess. Um, so yeah, uh, Undead Luck, Unluck, I really loved, and I think you guys would love it too. So let's move on to number three. Ooh, ooh, this number three, The Dangers in My Heart, season two. Okay, The Dangers in My Heart <laughs> is probably my favorite romance of the last couple years, okay? There have been some good romances, don't get me wrong. 
but there has not been one that has quite touched my heart as much as the dangers in my heart. So, whenever last season, uh, whenever the dangers in my heart uh, first premiered, I think it was last season, or whatever, this is the second season. Whenever it premiered, it initially put me out as, uh, in the description, uh, our main character there, uh, I forgot his name, <laughs> the guy, uh, he initially is very uh, murder prone, okay? He likes to think about death and whatnot. And he looks at our main girl here and basically is like, oh, I want to kill her. And that changes very, 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 very quick. So it goes from, oh, I want to kill her to, I think I like her to I think I love her, and how do I talk to her? How do I, like, say things to her? And then they, her also, <laughs> she also likes him. And the problem with the whole premise is they are very, very shy, and they do not know how to talk with each other, and they do not know about romance, and yeah... It hits every single string in my heart, okay? The shy, them getting together, slowly getting to love each other and whatnot. It is just great, okay? Now, this is one of those that, like, it, it is a tad, tad bit slow. But I think the pacing is good. Because there is some animes that I have watched where they have 24, 25 episodes. And they still do not get together. And it goes to another season. This is not one of those, okay? First season is basically him becoming aware of her. And then her becoming aware of him. So they kind of become friends and stuff like that. They kind of talk with each other. And at the end of the last season, I'm pretty sure it's where he finally started thinking, I think I like her. This season is them getting so much more closer. Okay? So I have a lot of pictures of them getting close to each other each other, getting very, very in intimate, and stuff like that, and then looking at each other, and whatnot, and then I also have the meme of, it's Kyover, it's so Kyover, and it's a play on words of uh, our main character's name, Kyo, or whatever, the nickname that she gives him, and it's over, the season's over. So, this is a romance anime in, based in high school, and it is about two shy people trying to basically confess kind of thing <laughs> and it hits every one of the heartstrings and at the end like each episode has a name that is basically something that one of the characters says that episode and it's usually at the very end of the episode so usually at the end of each episode there is a quote that is said that becomes the title of the episode and i think one of them is i like her or how do I talk with her, or stuff like that. And at the end is basically it. Oh, at the end of every episode, like I said, it's basically that quote, and it basically is the best part of the whole episode. It's basically just the end. And every time the end of the episode came around, and that quote finally came around, and, like, usually it was these pictures that were happening, like that i shown here, that were happening during the quotes and whatnot. And they just made my heart skip a beat, okay? If you are into romance and stuff like that, or if you're not into romance and you think a high school romance with shy people and stuff like that is cute and everything like that, you'll love this, okay? Like I've said before that I'm not a big romance person. This this might have changed me. <laughs> so anyways, uh, after gushing so long about this, I would highly, highly, high, highly recommend this, The Dangers of My Hearts, Season 1 and 2. And I could not put it number 1 and number 2, even though I feel like it deserves it, because there are some good shows that come after this. So, that's The Dangers of My Heart, Season 2, number 3. <laughs> okay, so, for number 2, we have Delicious in Dungeons. So, uh, Delicious in Dungeons is basically exactly what I kind of expected whenever I read the description, and more. So, Delicious Dungeons, like the description said whenever I was going over it the first time, it is basically people going into the dungeon and eating monsters. So, we have our main character, we have a uh, kind of fighter, we have a mage, we have a thief, and then we have uh, a dwarf that cooks. I don't know what he'd be considered. Maybe a berserker. <laughs> but anyways, 
Um, basically, I kind of glossed over it when I was initially reading the description, but the main reason why they're going to the dungeon to eat is because our main character's sister was eaten by a red dragon. That is in the title there. <laughs> and, um, they have to hurry up and go down there before she gets digested so they can revive her. And, basically, that's the reason why they are trying to hurry up down, go down to the dungeon. So, they basically go straight down the dungeon, eating whatever they can find. So, where Delicious Dungeon really shines is the food that they make. So, it gives a good idea of how you can cook monsters, and it gives me a great idea for D&D. <laughs> so, one of the first foods they eat is a walking mushroom that you can see uh, underneath the title there. And basically, you just chop it up and you cook it. That, pretty easy. Not anything special there. But, then there is also... Uh, the living armor. So, the living armor here to my side. Um, <laughs> you might think of animated armor and stuff like that from D&D uh, &D and whatnot. Animated armor is magic. Well, these living armors here to my side are not magic. They are shellfish. And what their characters do is they pry off the armor and they get at the shellfish and then they fry them up. Then also, there are vegetables in the dungeon if you did not know. But these vegetables do not grow in any sort of soil you would think of. They actually grow on, right here, golems. So, our dwarf friend has been going around in the dungeon for a while, and he has found a way to grow vegetables in the dungeon. And it is, he takes earth golems, and he plants vegetables on their back. These golems are special because they try to find water and also move to places of sunlight, so, they are perfect to grow vegetables on. And they just go and harvest the vegetables off the golems. That's that's the main thing with them. So, they're not eating a golem, but they are using them. Uh, up in the very top hand corner here, we have what you think would be uh, gold and gems and stuff like that. But they are not. No, 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 they are not. They are gem bugs and gold bugs. And also pearls and whatnot up there. So, basically, inside the dungeon, there are some creatures that pretend to be treasure. And they they are actually pretty tasty <laughs> from what they show in the show. So, basically, if you wanted to eat uh, a gold coin or some gems or whatnot that are instead little bugs and creatures, I guess they're perfect for you. Uh, it's very interesting. So, not only do you have to worry about mimics... But, you also have to worry about the treasure that is inside chests that they could be creatures that could kill you, and also be pretty tasty. Now, we're gonna skip past the ice cream sherbet there, and move down to this one down here that looks like crabs. So, inside the series, uh, there are mimics, like I said before, and basically mimics are basically crabs that live inside chests. So, basically, if you kill a mimic, you can have crab legs. <laughs> and claws and whatnot. Uh, then also, we have our ice cream sherbet up here, and you might think, oh, what, what do you do to make that? Is there some water creature or something like that that you freeze or whatnot? Well, actually, it's, the sherbet itself is not anything special. You did put, uh, some of those, uh, jewel crystal uh, insects on it to make it look cool. But the real special part about it is what they use to freeze the sherbet. So, um, they take a jar, they fill it with all the stuff for the sherbet and stuff like that, and then they used it to... <laughs> Actually, it's holy water. That's what they put in it. They put holy water in a jar, and then they used it to hit ghosts. So, ghosts cannot be hit by any physical means, but if you use holy or, I guess, holy water, <laughs> you can hit them. So, the joke with, behind it was that they used the jar, and basically the ghost went through the jar, but it got hit by the holy water, and ghosts also freeze things, or whatever, they are cold. So, it ended up freezing the holy water into our nice holy sherbet. So, Delicious Dungeon basically is a show that you basically want to be eating or getting ready to eat before you watch it, because it's going to make you hungry. And it is very unique in the form that there's a lot of foods and stuff like that, and it shows you how to cook with dungeon ingredients and creatures. So, next time I play D&D... If I can get the DM to play this, or watch this, then I could possibly be eating creatures very easily inside a dungeon. <laughs> or any creature that we run across. 
So, very cool. There's a lot of other foods that they make that I did not put on here, but these are kind of the highlights, I would say. So, that is number two, Delicious Dungeon. A lot better than I initially thought. <laughs> oh, and finally, we are to number one, which, surprise, surprise, it is Free Rend Beyond Journey's End. Free Rend is my favorite anime this season and last season. It is one of those that you, I don't think I'll forget. So, Free Rend Beyond Journey's End is basically the afterthought of a long journey. So, after a long journey of defeating the Demon King and saving the world, Freerin and her party members uh, basically just go back to their normal lives. So, our, the hero um, goes back and just lives to an old age, and he's human. Uh, there's also another human priest that is also there, and he gets very old. And then there's the dwarf in the party that is still alive at the point that we're at. But, basically, our main character is Freerin, the elf there that can live hundreds, thousands of years and whatnot. Millennia. And it is basically her thinking about her friends that have died. Because in the first couple episodes, two of the party members that she lived and like experienced all this new stuff, her, the journey, die. And she does not know how to feel about that. <laughs> and basically her journey has her understanding what she lost and the friends she did and like reminiscing on the journey because she is following the same path that they went to the demon castle and she goes along with uh, the purple haired girl Fern there and also the red haired guy uh, Stark and they are basically uh, following the path that the original party took. And they meet people along the way that were like young babies or children that are now fully grown that Freerun has come there. And basically, it's just her seeing how the world has changed since uh, defeating the Demon King. And we it is a very... It's a meme farm, okay? There are so many memes. There is wonderful, okay? I cannot say how much I love this because... Most of the time, you see a journey uh, happening right before your eyes. Which, I guess they are journeying, but this is the afterthought of the journey. Like, the main quest has already happened. The Demon Lord's already dead. This is everything that happens afterwards. All the little things that happen, people getting on with their lives and whatnot. And Freerend is kind of feeling sad about losing her party members. And she also loves Griamores and ends up in Mimics all the time. <laughs> So, I have some memes here. Uh, so, my master told me men enjoy receiving this kind of gifts. So, it's a little freer and dull. <laughs> uh, there's also, let's go in and out. Easy 10-year adventure. Which, that is a play on uh, Rick and Morty where he's like, a quick, like, a couple minute adventure. But, for Freerin, 10 years is basically a few minutes or a few days in her lifespan. Uh, also, way above me up here in the top, we have Do It For Her, which is a play on The Simpsons, uh, where uh, Homer uh, does it for his daughter. Uh, we also have uh, <laughs> a joke on one of the animes that is to come in the, I guess, our next ranking is Gushing Over Magical Girls. And uh, basically, it's a joke that those two girls should get together. Then we have one of my favorites here is I finally saved up enough. I can finally finish my collection. And it's Bionicles. I loved Bionicles. And what do you mean they don't sell them anymore? They were fully stocked 23 years ago. That is something that plays very, very hard into my heart. Because I would love to buy some Bionicles at this point. But uh, you can't really buy them in stores. You have to get them like, on eBay and whatnot. And I need to just buy some Bionicles. <laughs> So, Freer and Beyond Journey's End is great anime, is my favorite. It is a journey. All the characters are very lovable, and I just love it. I am excited to see what they do next. There is never a dull moment in it, and it is hilarious. So, go watch Be uh, Freer and Beyond Journey's End if you don't watch any of these other ones. It is... It will not disappoint you, and you will love it. I don't think there's anyone that will not love it unless they just do not like fantasy. Which, if you don't like fantasy, that's kind of all this is, so... Eh. But anyways, 
uh, that is our top 10 ranking for the winter season of 2020. But, <laughs> we are not done. Um, there is a few other series that happened that are a little more etchy and lewd that I did not put in the original just because I didn't think they were as good initially. But they are very good in their own right in the very etchy and lewd aspects. So, not only that, but we have the etchy ranking. And there are only three in this, but I think they are fairly good. So, for our etchy ranking, number three, there's only three, uh, we have the Tales of the Wedding Rings. So, the Tales of the Wedding Ring, uh, whenever I watched the trailer, um, I, I saw Pretty Women, and I thought, hey, I need to watch this. And basically, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The story itself is not that great. Basically, you're just there to see pretty women. And we have all these. These are all princesses that have rings that give them to the ring king. And that's the reason why it's called the wedding rings or whatever tales of the wedding ring. But he has to go around and get their wedding. He has to marry all these five women here. So we have the beast woman there. That is probably my favorite. We have the elf. Then we have the demon. I'm pretty sure it's a demon. Then we have a regular human. And then uh, an android <laughs> made by dwarves. So these are the women that you will want to watch in the series. Like I said, I won't sugarcoat it. The story's not great. But you're there for the women. And there is a uncensored version if that it hits your fancy. <laughs> so let's move on to number two. Okay. For number two, we have Chained Soldier. Chained Soldier is one of these that I knew was going to be very, 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 very good. Uh, <laughs> or at least very, very uh, watched because of how lewd it looked. And the characters are wonderful. I love the character design of every single one of them. And I will not say the story is bad. The story is pretty good. Um, <laughs> it leans into the edgy parts of very, very much. As you can see, all the characters... Um, basically, uh, there is a new dimension that portals ended up getting, um, opened up into, I think it's called the Mato dimension or whatever. But anyways, people get pulled in there every once in a while. So they make, uh, basically a military force to fight the demons that come out, or not demons, whatever they are, the creatures that come out. And they can only be women because there is a peach that is inside the new realm that whenever a, uh, female eats the peach, they gain an ability or a power, and males do not get that. So, basically, the military force is full of females with powers that fight creatures. Uh, our main uh, women pro protagonist, the white-haired one, it has the ability to... Uh, I don't... <sighs> she controls the creatures, and she basically makes them their slave, or whatever. And she uses them to fight. Uh, then we have the kind of blue-haired girl that can uh, mimic powers and mimic things. So she can make weapons. She can also mimic other people's powers. Pretty cool. Uh, Pink-haired uh, girl. She's a sensory type that she can basically sense things. And then we have the yellow-haired one that... <laughs> she can grow big. She can grow big. And that was... One of the main things that people liked about this was because uh, the giantess tag became very big because of this and another show that we're going to get onto. Uh, there's also one that can teleport or spatially uh, move things, like make gates. Um, yeah, it is very, very, very good. <laughs> it's very etchy. And basically, uh, our main girl uh, with the white hair, whenever she uses her ability on our main guy character, which he can turn into uh, kind of one of the creatures from the motto, uh, she has to give him... She has to kind of do what he wants for a little bit for because she made him the slave. So some things happen and some fetishes are seen. And yeah, just go watch it. <laughs> so we have some memes. So... We have here to my side. We have Esdeath and then also the character from this. So we have Esdeath, who are you? And then it's I am you, but a decade later, which she is basically Esdeath, but a decade later. <laughs> then we have up above me here is, hey, what did you do? Uh, I went to Yuki's room while he was sleeping. <laughs> it's like, oh, 
That, that's bad. And it's like, I'm not your... Oh, Uni... Onesan? There are very bad people here. And it's like, I'm not your Onesan. <laughs> Get away from me. Uh, then we have to the side here. Uh, parents, our son will become a doctor or engineer. And then, basically, my son, who has watched uh, Change Soldier, uh, basically wants to become a slave to the women. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, it is one of those that it is the second best, like I said, of the etchy size. But we have one more that is the best etchy lewd one of the season. So let's move on to number one. Ah, uh, number one. Number one is the one that I looked over whenever we were looking over this season. It is a magical girl anime. It is number one, gushing over magical girls. Now, this is one that... <laughs> is basically a farm for fetishes. So, it has a little bit for everyone. Um, <laughs> some bondage, some tentacles, some, uh, what other stuff? I don't know, there's a lot. <laughs> so, basically, if you want to see a lot of fetishes kind of looked at and stuff like that, uh, you should probably watch it. Now, I only saw this because of all the memes that were being saw and made and whatnot and there were a lot of good memes and as you can see these things here it's absolute cinema <laughs> um so we have uh some of <laughs> the stuff there so we have them kind of bondage up by vines we have a facial expression of one of the characters uh we have uh how people think villainous anime look like and then how they actually look like is gushing over magical girls and then we have the main character of way above me here, where get you a girl that can do both. <laughs> so basically, uh, our main character there is a very, very shy girl initially. Initially, she's very shy. And she does not look at very many lewd things. But she gets recruited into an evil organization that fights magical girls. Um, and she very, very, very quickly becomes uh, kind of... She's not really... She becomes a sadist. That's that's the best way. She becomes the dom of bondage. <laughs> and she likes... She loves magical girls. She loves to watch them. She loves magical girls. All of them. She has merch of magical girls. But she also likes to kind of uh, do stuff to magical girls. So yeah. It's one of those that is... You've probably seen a lot of stuff of. It is the best lewd, etchy one of the season. And uh, I will not talk much about it because reasons, but uh, you might be interested in it. Uh, yeah, so that is all of the anime that I watched this season. Um, there were a few that did drop off that I just did not quite feel into watching. Um, but yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed. That gave you a very, very, very good look of what anime came out that season. And I hope you enjoyed. Yeah, if you don't, you're not into the etchy stuff there, forget about it. Pretend like the etchy ranking does not exist and just go back over to our top 10. And just go watch For Your and Beyond Journeys in. <laughs> Possibly go watch uh, Delicious Dungeon if you're into kind of a fantasy kind of aspect about food. Dangers in Your Heart if you're into a high school romance with shy people. Undead Unluck if you want a somewhat superpower like anime. Shangri-La Frontier, if you're looking for a VR game one. Solo leveling, if you want to look at what people were very, very interested in for years in the manga industry. <laughs> the wrong way to use healing magic, <laughs> if you want to use healing magic wrong in another game. Ah, a villainous level 99, if you are into kind of a story-driven game. And then Metallic Rouge, if you want, uh, yeah, Mecha. Then Fluffy Paradise, if you just want to pet fluffy things and you want to watch a small little girl pet fluffy things. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. That was the top anime of Winter 2024, in my opinion. And I will see you guys again whenever we go over the next season of anime. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you next time. So, bye!